Uh, really happy, really happy uh, having a chance to be here for, for the full year, for the full season, being a, a part of the whole team. Um, it was really a, a, a good challenge for me uh, and a step that I really wanted to get done. Uh, and everything was going well during the training camp, uh, during the preseason game. So I'm really happy now, though. I'm focused, and we all focus on what's coming. The uh, first season of the game, preseason was great for us. We we learned great stuff. Uh, we got to learn uh, the new kind of the new situation, the new environment. So, but now we all excited and focused uh, on what's coming. And I saw you working with Igor there for a little bit at the end. How would you describe him as a coach, and, and how is he? Uh, it's been great. It's been great. You got so many uh, different coaches from different backgrounds. You got uh, former players. You got former coaches that have uh, also coached overseas in America. So, I mean, to learn to in the process to develop is just amazing because you got Igor, you got all the other other coaches too that can teach you different stuff for, for your game and you can just, uh, as a sponge, get all that those information and get better. So it's been great. Does it help that he has an international background too, and so many guys on this team do? And I kind of noticed that maybe why he and Luca have such a tight bond. Do you do you kind of recognize that him coming from overseas and, and having that background is is helpful to add a different element to? to yeah, definitely, stuff? definitely, definitely. Because it was in he knows our position. He knows. Uh, <laughs> there, he, there he is. Um, but yeah, he understands. <laughs> voila, voila. <laughs> But uh, definitely, he understands what uh, position we were in uh, coming from other countries, coming from Europe, coming from overseas. Uh, he's been coaching overseas, so he knows also how uh, the development uh, process is over there, um, where it's kind of like different from uh, the American process. Uh, so, you know, having, having that mix is just amazing for all the players to find themselves in a, in a real. Uh, I'll say comfort zone while they getting uncomfortable working. Thanks. Hi. Thanks for How are you doing? Talk a little bit about your game. What part of your game comes easiest to you? What part you still need to work on? A little bit about your philosophy of basketball and what you hope to bring to the map. Specific impact. I mean, team player. Uh, sort of all my uh, mentality is to give everything I got on the court every uh, every game and every practice. So, uh, and that starts. I mean. My ability is on the defensive hand, obviously. Uh, we got a good group, and I feel like I can really add uh, uh, some value to our group and some help, some talk, uh, some little details, but where we can all be together and um, you know get better on the side of the court, but then offensively, uh, individually, personally, that would, be, that would be my goal. Uh, learning how I can help the team, how I can get better to, uh, in order for our team to be better. But obviously, it's a team mentality here at Mavs Basketball. That's how we call it. And uh, we really excited about what's coming. I, I know you've known uh, Christophe for a long time. Uh, how much does he seem more uh, upbeat or, or more emotionally engaged and physically? And, and do you think that uh, comes from being healthy for the first time in a long time? Or does maybe a fresh voice on the sideline also help that? So, you know, to me, it's uh, a little bit different because I wasn't here uh, last year. Uh, I've known him, obviously. He's my, he's my teammate in New York, so I've seen him at uh, his best. But from what I can say, from what I saw right now, he's it's, it's the same. And uh, he, 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 always, he also got better, uh, worked on this game. So I'm new in this environment, too, so I don't know if it's the sideline. I don't know if it's – but everybody's so locked in and him. Uh, the first, he's locked in. He's, he looks healthy. He looks great. He moving. He moving great on the court. So, to me, like I said, it's a little different because I was in here last year. But from what I can see so far, he's he's just doing great. Also, uh, I know the, the, the blue line on the court outside the three point line. I kind of know what that's. For. There's a blue line now, and two looks like it's about 16 feet off from the basket. What does that? What purpose does that serve for you guys? Uh, it's a. I, f I feel like it's a kind of, we call it the four point line, uh, a line to extend really the, uh, the range of shooters, the uh, space, space also, the flow out uh, gives a lot of opportunities, but we draw it out uh, actually to practice on it, to practice our range, but also to learn 
obviously out of shoot from far, but then it gives us also ability to space the floor, create more drive opportunities. And because you know when you play too tight, you might have a lot of helps, a lot of uh, uh, defensive helps and all of that. So uh, spacing out the floor allows you to uh, see other things offensively. And also on the other hand, forces you to uh, guard more your player one-on-one -on -one and uh, be more relentless on help. So uh, I feel like it's a good line to um, improve as a team. Sure, I just want to make sure I understand something right. Um, with signing Justin and Jay and cutting them again today, was that a move done to like, retain their G League rights then? I think you said it best. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that I was not right. Yes. No, I think that's correct. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Hey, uh, a couple things. Uh, Christoph's obviously is, is, looks like he's uh, rejuvenated this, this year, and I know. Uh, it, and I, I don't, I'm wondering, is, do you think it's uh, health, mostly health related or does a new voice, not that the old voice was doing anything wrong, but does a new voice sometimes help a player in a, you know, a little change of at least the face of it? Yeah, um, good question. I, I think um, health first, foremost. Uh, being a former player, sometimes if you're hurt and you, you're not able to do what you normally can do, um, and, you, and then to give him credit, he never complained about anything. You know, he 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 just did what he was capable of doing um, with the injuries. Um, but when you're healthy and you can move and do the things that he's doing, um, the fun, the joy um, comes back, and uh, you start to feel good, and, and you're doing things that you normally have done in the past. I think that's there's a combination. I don't know so much about the voice. You would have to ask him that question. Um, but I think uh, the way I envisioned uh, KP um, just being a basketball player. And uh, again, I've said this before, is you can play through him in the post. He's not going to take every shot, double team. He makes the right pass. Uh, he's about winning. And helping the team, you know, win, and so it's it's been fun to watch. Uh, one of the compliments I gave those guys this morning was, you know, we we had you know two to three hundred million. No, we had about almost maybe four hundred million dollars sitting on the bench yesterday, and uh, they were into the game as much as anybody. Um, and and a lot of times they think no one's watching, but Tim and KP and. Uh, Luca were into the game helping those guys on the floor and cheering those guys on. And that and that just shows how close we are as a team. Totally different random question. Uh, uh, we've, we've kind of grown used to the, to the blue arc three or four feet beyond the, the three-point line. Yeah. But I noticed there's a, like a, another arc now, like about 16 feet from the basket maybe. And yeah. If you can uh, enlighten us what that purpose that's so. That's for the hockey. That's for hockey. <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> I'm joking. Um, I, I, it's not for hockey. Not for hockey. Um, it's the. It's the. Everybody talks about spacing and the depth and how far guys shoot, which we all understand. But that's our veer line, our defensive principles uh, of understanding um, when we talk about veering, um, where it takes place. And so we have that on the floor uh, to be able to, when we use drills, and to demonstrate where we would like that veer to take place. And so it's been very helpful. Um, I, I saw this line uh, in LA uh, for the last two years. And so, um, again, I borrowed it from Frank. Um, and it's been very helpful for us. Yeah, you know, I, I, again, the credit goes, they do the work. Um, we introduced that line and they, they accepted it. Um, and so I think it takes a lot of the gray out in the pick and roll situations for us as our, our schemes. And uh, it's, it's been really good. And then unfortunately we can't ask other teams to put the line down when we go on the road. Um, so we improvise and uh, they've done a great job with that.
Hi, Coach. Uh, you're a few think. days away from your head coaching debut at a place that means a lot to you. Yes. Where are you, like, emotionally, mentally, spiritually? What are you thinking? How are you feeling head coaching the Dallas yeah, I'm excited. I, you know, I wake up every day and have to pinch myself because it, this is a dream come true um, to have the opportunity to be the head coach of the Dallas Mavs. Um, it's surreal. You know, um, I think someone asked me last night, being in Milwaukee, that was the last time I was a head coach. Um, but I didn't even look at it that way. I, I, I mean, I'm just a coach that's trying to help my players be better. Right. Um, I know it labeled me as the head coach, but it's a collective group. I don't make all the decisions. Uh, we talk about it as a staff and we talk about it as a team. And so um, when you say my debut, I think I already had my debut. Um, I'm just a coach out there when we head to Atlanta um, and, and we're out there to f figure out how to beat a very talented team, you know, and so um, I, I know everybody says I'm the head coach, uh, but it's, a you know, a group that I, I lean on um, for answers, and then um, and so I guess to answer your question, we're all making our debut, um, and that's just not the coaches, but the players too, right? And so we're all, I think we're all excited, and uh, we're ready to go. Yeah, we got one on Zoom, and then uh, we're ready to go. All right. Go ahead. Hey, Coach, uh, hey, um, I, I just wanted to ask, you kind of, you've been around the team for a long time as a player and as a coach, what are some commonalities that you see in the teams that you've been on that have been successful at this point in the season? Like, what are some commonalities heading into the season that you've seen that led to that success? Yeah, that's a good, uh, good that's a really good question. Um, I think one of the biggest things is uh, the closeness uh, of a team. Um, and, I, and I really would say this, uh, you know, as a player, uh, Dallas, uh, Phoenix, and, and New Jersey, uh, being as a, a player, you saw um, like friendships, um, the competitiveness wasn't about, you know, trying to embarrass anybody in practice. It was more to make each other better. Um, being close on the road, going to dinners, uh, hanging out, being friends, and so and I, I think I've said this about this team, is that this team really enjoys one another. Um, during the games, at practice, uh, on the road. And so uh, I would say that that gives the advantage uh, to your team or as a player and as a coach, that when things get a little tough, uh, that, you know, because you trust and you're close, that, you know, good things will happen in those situations.